Hey, Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs post-game show podcast. Diamondbacks beat the Cubs in a tough matinee at Wrigley Field. Zach Gallen outdueling Jamison Tyone one to nothing in a complete game shutout. Just like we all expected. Just like we all expected. Listen, this was a tough start to this series. Yep. The good news is the Bears face the Packers on Sunday. Is that good news? <laughs> we hope. <laughs> we hope that this is the, not the start of a negative weekend. The good news. The good news is that we're all going to die someday. Also, the good news is Justin Steele goes tomorrow. Justin but, Steele goes tomorrow. But more importantly, tomorrow's another day to hopefully jumpstart the offense. So, uh, Hello to everybody in the yeah. live YouTube chat. Best way to enjoy the CHGO experience is to subscribe to the CHGO Sports YouTube page so you don't miss any episodes. Uh, yeah. If you like to just listen to us in podcast form on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you might get your podcast, make sure you give us a five star review. Lots of thumbs up for everybody, including thumbs up to this live show, please. Thank you very much. I saw one just added right there. Yeah. Um, Trevor says, "Vibes gone. Cubs lucky if they take one game." What are you talking about? We got we got Justin Steele tomorrow and Kyle Hendricks on Sunday. I mean, come on, man. I saw some. I, I, I got a I got a call. I mean, I understand we're pissed they lost this game, but like, come on. Like, have we learned anything from this season? Have we learned anything? That's all I'm going to say. All Barb, right. we are live. Um, Hi, Barb. Here's the deal. Last night, we knew that was an important loss because Tyone had been struggling coming in. He's been struggling all year for the most part, yeah. Uh, he had a little and blip of face. success there where we were like, oh, maybe he's figured out, and then right back to the old stuff where the fastball wasn't working. And more importantly, Zach Gallon going today. And going against Zach Gallon. Yeah. So, but he answered the call. But the Cubs offense couldn't get anything. I mean, three hits, they didn't get a runner to second base. They tried. I mean, they tried to steal three two bases. hits. Gabriel, Not a single guy in scoring position. Gabriel Moreno throws out two runners. First and inning, ninth inning, best chance to score, right? Pretty I would much say, it. yeah. Ninth inning, at least you had that's one seven, out and one at first. That seventh inning, uh, after I think it was after Merriweather struck out the side. The Cubs had the top of the order coming up. Nico got a leadoff hit, I believe. I want to say that's what happened. I feel like the, the times it looked like they were going to but then like, finally break happened. through and score, they yeah. had the right guys up. Yeah. First inning, they had the right guys up. Ninth inning, Talkman's at first. Yep. You've got Nico and Hap. Now, Swinging that's where the debate comes in. This I'm not laying this. Do not get me wrong on this. I'm not laying this loss at the feet of Ian Happ mm -hmm. or Nico Horner for that matter. It's just it was just the offense in in general. Um, but again, I've been asking all season: Could we at least see Cody Bellinger bat third once? Just because one out of every five games, he's probably going to get an extra at bat. He's your best player. It's not even debatable. He's by far your best hitter. Yeah. It's not even debatable. So by batting him third, you know he's batting in the first inning, and you might get one extra at bat at the end. So when the game came down to it, you might have had Bellinger at the plate instead of Hap. Now, Hap has come through before. He's so, playing, again, I'm not, I'm well not laying this at the feet of Hap. I'm not even saying Hap shouldn't be the three-hitter. I'm just saying I want to see Bellinger in one of those first three spots. Now, I heard him on the radio yesterday, and he was asked about it, and he said, yeah, I'm cool with whatever. Once you get through the first inning, it's all the same. Mm -hmm. It is, except for the fact that if you hit in the first three, you have a chance to have – you're more, way more likely to get that extra at bat than the other guys are. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I complained a, a lot about it in you know the months of July and August, but I would say since the Cubs went to Pittsburgh – when they had that series in Pittsburgh, I was in Vegas at the time. Mm -hmm. Ian Happ is he's been hitting well. I know this series yeah. he hasn't, but no one's been hitting well this series. So like for me, sure, yes, in this scenario in the ninth inning, yeah, you I would have rather had Bellinger hitting third instead of Ian Happ. But there have been many times where the Cubs have had guys on base in recent weeks and Ian Happ's coming up. Everyone 
uh, on social media is, is doesn't is you know not optimi- optimistic about it. And what has he done? He's came through in big moments. So, uh, I'll, I, again, I think that Bellinger should be up higher. I still think that Hap should be high, like higher in the lineup if he is going to be in the first three. But at the same time, it hasn't necessarily – like that factoid hasn't necessarily hurt them recently. No, no. But every once in a while, we have the same conversation in post game where we say, huh, yeah, that could have been Bellinger. Could have been. That could have been Bellinger one more time. And it, it, it's, just, it's just not about Hap. Hap's, Hap's uh, done his part. Yeah. Um, but I could even see him batting second, Bellinger. Yeah. Now, again, it sounded like on the radio he did sort of prefer fourth, but he also then followed up by saying, man, it's all the same after the first inning. Yeah. I mean, again, though, we we wouldn't really be like – I've realized this that mostly just because, like, Ian Happ is a good player. We know that Ian Happ is a good player. But these – like, we find ourselves more and more complaining about the lineup when the Cubs lose. Right. Well, yeah, that's and natural. That well, yeah, and it's natural. But that and whenever the offense is going through a rut, and sure, this rut is two days worth. That's it because they were just mashing baseballs against the Giants just a few days ago, right? Um, I think mostly Zach Allen just deserves all the credit in the world. I mean, he was great. The guy was, he was incredible. Great. I I I don't. I can sit here and complain about the offense. I mean, you want me to complain about Ian Happ, Luke? Okay. Mike Talkman. I don't. I I don't. No, let let me. Oh, you want to complain about it? I will do it for the sake of of complaining about Ian Happ batting third. This is what I'll complain about. And for the chat. Mike Talkman works that incredible at bat. Next batter up, Nico Horner, swinging first pitch. Hits a pop-up to right field. Next batter up, Ian Happ, first pitch. (laughs) Swinging it and hits the ground ball. I mean, he... Talkman works that great at bat to get the walk, to get a guy on base, to get the tying run on first base, and it takes two pitches for Zach Allen to just end the game. And it's just kind of like, like the Cubs are one of the top teams in baseball in terms of pitches per at bat or whatever. I saw, I know uh, Marquis said something about that in re, in a recent game, and it's just like. Like, I know they're trying to maybe jump on Gallon a little bit because he was leaving the ball over the plate a little bit more in that ninth inning. Yeah, Me and for you sure. both mentioned it while we were sitting on the couch. But, like, I'm – that's just – to me, it's like he just walked a guy. He's over 100 pitches. That's you got to work You got to work like those 104, 105 yeah. af- after the at-bat by Talkman. It's like, if you guys work the same type of at-bat, he's going to have to come out of the game no matter what. Right, and so – to me, like it looked like it was building up to be like we either getting the fake rally that was going to hurt us really bad, or we were going to get a comeback. And it was we didn't even get the fake rally. There, you know, a walk in the ninth inning isn't even though it was a one nothing game. Didn't feel like even a fake rally the way that game was going. Because there were three hits and no one even making it to second base. So that's kind of my beef with the ninth inning is just the fact that Nico and Ian Happ both, you know, just like going up there hacking whenever the guy's got over 100 pitches and talking works that walk and I just feel like they could have got a better pitch or at least done something to finally get Gallon out of the game I, and I, I and it's hard for me to really get on Nico too much he's the only one who actually did hit for the Cubs today I think he had two of the three hits so you know I think he had two of the three hits do you Correct do you agree wrong, with but. Calypso's chaos rather get no rally no Rather get no fake rally than a painful one. Well, like, yeah. would, would you rather just them I mean, go one, two, three in the ninth, or would you, would you rather yeah. see the last two nights where there's been a I, little fight in the ninth? I, I mean, I, I don't think this team showed that they quit today. It's, no, and they didn't last night either. They didn't. Sh- yeah, they didn't show that they quit. So like, and what he's asking, yeah, I'd rather just see them, you know. Show win. the show. I'd rather see them win, but if we're if you make me if you force me to decide on that, it's like I guess I'd rather just not see the fake rally. But again, they didn't they didn't do enough for me to even think it was a fake rally. So, uh, and that's because Nico and, and Ian Hat both just like their at bats lasted <laughs> one pitch. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where, um, you know, I, you there's not even really a, a moment in the game where I felt like. The Cubs blew their chance or anything. I mean, I said on the couch when we were walking over, like getting ready to walk over here, 
the first inning was the only time I felt like they legitimately could have. But the Diamondbacks defense and the wind blowing in, I guess, might have helped because Talkman let off the game with a hard ground ball to short that uh, Lawler made a really great defensive play on to get him out. And then Nico hit the homer or hit the fly ball to the warning track that we all thought was a homer because <laughs> the cameraman or whatever. Yeah. But honestly, it, it that, I mean, that's it. how good yes, Gallon was today. It's like, that's the only, if I can remember that and I can't remember anything else, then like, again, I just think you got to give all the credit to Gallon. And I give a lot of credit to Tyone for, for doing his part today. He ain't the reason they lost. No one in the chat's for once not complaining about Tyone. So if there's any silver lining in this is you're hoping that this is the start of a, a nice little stretch for Tyone moving forward. And you, you absolutely need it right now here in September. So it's just uh, it was a frustrating loss, but I'm I also still feel good about tomorrow just because Zach Gowan's not pitching tomorrow, but Justin yes. Steele is. And you can still split the series. All right, they swept the Giants this week. You get a chance to split the series still, and then you go on the road and play Colorado. All right, I understand like division division wise, we're going to be rooting for the Brewers to lose tonight, and hopefully they do. And if they don't, they'll be what three games back again. But you're still you're still solidly in that se- in that second wild card spot, and if the playoffs start tomorrow, you're dancing. All right, so that's. That's my silver lining to it. It's a frustrating loss, but things could absolutely be worse. Uh, a couple of interesting uh, comments in the live chat here on YouTube. Uh, where was the one? Somebody said this is all because of, uh, yeah, Call says all because of the vomit bat. Yes, the Cubs are 0-2 since the vomit bat. Um, Come on, er- <laughs> man. <laughs> Listen, we're going to tell you how we almost saved the Cubs season today. We're going to. <laughs> yeah, that's coming up. That's what they call a tease in television. Yeah, that's what they call um, a tease. Somebody else in the chat was talking about, you know, this is the one time Tyone's good, and then they crap the bed offensively. I mean, that is the way it felt. I noticed that uh, Music Man said, you call that you call that fight? Music Man Harp? You call that fight? He's talking about the ninth inning. Well, I mean, at least after a game where you had three hits, you got the tying run on in the ninth inning and the winning run at the plate. Yeah. Okay. And last night they scored a couple runs and at least made it mildly interesting instead of going strikeout, strikeout, strikeout to end the game. I'm not saying the offenses look good. I'm just saying there's been at least a little fight in the ninth inning. The last two nights, the offense has not looked good. We've firmly said that. But when, when you talk about putting together some sort of consecutive at bats that look good right yeah like a rally. Like some sort of some sort of rally or whatever sure talking getting on there in a one nothing game the way that zach gallon was pitching it's like all right we're, we're trying here we're trying we're trying to do something and, you know they scored a run in the ninth inning yesterday so i mean it was six to one entering the ninth inning but whatever like they they it you didn't feel like they quit at the end of the game, like, like like you said, they didn't go up there and strike out three times in the game. So. Didn't love the approach in the last two at-bats, but it doesn't mean they went out there and quit. Talkman's at-bat was really good. Yeah. Um, there, There's the super chat I was talking about. Night 6776, of course, the one time Tyone does well, the offense craps the bat. Now, credit to us for turning Jameson's Tyone season around just in time for the postseason. Credit to us, Credit because to us. here on this podcast last night, it was all, everybody's saying, Tyone's pitching, lost tomorrow. Back, Tyone's pitching, lost tomorrow. Now, that factually did come true. Tyone mm-hmm. did pitch, and they did lose, but it wasn't Tyone's fault. Yep. Joey, do you have the clip of last night when we, we turned around Jameson Tyone's season? The, the moment that we started to turn it around for Tyone. So. But why can't, why can't the... Opposite happened tomorrow. Tyone has been less than we expected. That's fair. But why can't Tyone come out and pick up his teammate? That'd be great. Pick pick it up tomorrow. I, I mean, I see the chat and I understand it. Everybody's chalked tomorrow up as loss. Yeah. Baseball's a funny game. It is a funny game. It's funny, it's a funny, funny, funny game, game. Especially when I wear the I'm ready to be hurt again shirt tomorrow. That could be. Yep, yep. Against that gallon too. All odds against us. What if what if for one day? We changed the rules of who he got so you could select a pitcher and you took Tyone. Oh, 
Oh, well, just now looking to you're spark really, something. Now just looking to spark some. And I know the integrity of the game. So there it is. That's, that was the moment. And then sure enough, Cody asked this morning, can I take Tyone as uh, who you got commissioner? I said, I am willing to make a one-day amendment mm -hmm. as long as somebody else in the group will go along with it. Brendan at the last minute said, go ahead, take Tyone. So See, we'll, we'll, we'll get and, to that. And so, I would have worn the I'm ready to be heard again shirt, but I was given the uh, opportunity to take Tyone for who you got. So you have to say you have you can't take the energy from the I'm ready to be heard again shirt out. Like you can't use it all up before October. Right. You have to you have to choose special spots. So since we haven't been taking pictures for who you got for literally three months, you know, I felt like that was enough. And at least for him, we, again, like I said, he is the silver lining from, right. this, from this game because going into his next start, I feel like we'll at least have a little bit more optimism. It's just, it sucks that he had that great of a start and the Cubs still lost. It's not his fault. The brain only believes what it sees. Yeah. So as of today, I believe in Jamison Tyone for his next start. Now we have a couple more super chats. Was that to quote a great friend of ours? Yes, we golfed with. Yes. Matt, Matt Shaysby. And then I drained a 30-foot putt. Very emotional. Uh, that was the CHO Coghill uh, takeover. Uh, Michael says for $5 a super chat, 80% of three-spot appearances this year by a guy hitting under 250, under 20 homers too. Seriously, what is it going to take to get a change there. Well, Ken, Tommy Pham has under 20 homers and is barely hitting 250, I believe, for the Diamondbacks, too. Like, I think I genuinely, like we've talked about it before, I think the reason that they justify it is that Ian Happ gets on base a lot. Correct. Too, right? Yeah, so they'd like to have people on base when their home run hitter comes up. And I'm because, not. Because the three guys at the top are not, right. whether it's Talkman, Nico. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't know how many. Games. Hap. I don't know. I know Tommy Fan didn't even start the year with the Diamondbacks, and I, I don't know how many games he's been hitting third there. But I'm just saying, like, like there's a thought process to it, and that that's that's the thought process to it. He he walks a lot. He you know he's a great on base percentage. So they're thinking if he gets on base, then you got Bellinger coming up for a potential damage opportunity. But yeah, why can't they do that with Hat batting second and Bellinger batting third? But you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Nico's got over 60 RBIs uh, this season. Why can't he bat fifth or sixth? You know, it, it, Say has been so hot. Why not move him up to fifth? And, uh, you know, yeah. like, and you can, or move, he's been hitting so well that I wouldn't mind him going back to fourth, even though star of the year he was batting fourth consistently and not doing well in it. Uh, but, my guess is even I've, Swanson. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Swanson batting fourth, even though he's kind of struggled in these yeah, last right. month or so. But like, you again, you want your best players at near the top of the lineup. And I'm sorry for no, that's all right. I, I was just gonna say my guess is the the answer would be if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, and they've like, been and, and they have the been winning. Now, yeah. yes, you can you can zoom in and say, well, that's two losses. But if you zoom out. Since the All-Star break, it has been winning, and this is where guys have been playing pretty much all season. We have a couple of Super Chats. One is going to bring up a point. Uh, I will point out, Ryan Herrera has the day off. Yeah, so Ryan he is not at Wrigley not Field. Uh, Ryan is doing the wedding thing on the road to, uh, this week. He's going to go watch someone get married. He's going to um, <laughs> take part in watching the vows. Okay, uh, <laughs> can we see those Super Chats, Joey? Uh, yes, we can. First one was... Uh, well, you can I, read this Joe, one from Brian here. Giacomo, I believe, had There's one, one from Brian Oh, oh here, sorry, this. Brian G. I missed this one. Oh. Love the CHGO crew. Thanks for speaking what all of us fans are feeling. I'll feel better tomorrow if Steel flexes on the D-backs. We hear you, Brian. We, we already, we already I think read that this did, one from Knight. I think that's going to happen. We, of did, course, the we did the night one. Does. We did Steel. Yeah. Joe DiGiacomo, 999. Ross, after the game, very arrogant about his decision to pull Tyone. Ask Ryan if you can. Nobody asked about why he brought Quas in instead of Lighter to go start the eighth. This one on Ross again. Wow. Um, People complaining that they took well, that they start, too There soon? was a bunch of righties to start that inning, and then the lefties came up. Right. He wanted the righty, 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 and then he wanted Lighter to go against lefty, 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 which is the way it worked out. Yeah. The problem was that Quas walked guys. Yeah. He, he, gave, he, up, gave, he, up, he gave up a leadoff hit, yeah. and then he walked a guy. And... 
I don't I have mean, a problem with Tyone being pulled. No, I don't personally. Either. I I know that when it happened, very quickly, so that you're at least you're first guessing it. Yeah, uh, there were a lot of people on Cubs Twitter, um, saying, "Wait a minute, what are you doing? This guy's dominating. He's giving up one hit. How can you take him out? It's mm-hmm. only the sixth inning." And the answer would be, he saw these matchups. Righty, 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 lefty, lefty. He he saw those matchups and thought this is the perfect place to use our high leverage guys. Now, Merriweather came in and went bing, bang, boom. Yeah, You can't argue with that. Now, maybe you could argue and say, well, that could have been the next inning. But then the matchups wouldn't have lined up the way he was looking ahead down the line. Bigger picture for it for me was you got six innings out of Tyone, one hit, nine strikeouts. I'm going to... I'm going to take my chips and bring them back. Yeah. This is what we this is what I complained about. The opposite is what I complained about about a week ago when you had Smiley give 3 innings and I said, "I've seen enough. That was great. You got 3 innings out of Smiley, no runs, take him out. They went one more inning and it didn't go as well." Mm-hmm. So, I can't I can't talk out of both sides. I thought you gave Tyone a nice taste for the next start. He heard that we were willing him to a win, and he probably heard about the who you got pick, and he was like, I've got all the confidence in the world. Cody's got my back is probably what he was thinking. Yeah. And then he went out and he, uh, listen, if you get, if you can get Tyone to pitch like that, yeah. every other start the rest of the way, I feel real good about the way the Cubs will look here in the final weeks of the season. Right. Right? If just every other start looks like that, you will take that out of Tyone right now because mm-hmm. Hendricks has pitched well. Steele has been amazing. Assad, other than last night, has been brilliant. Wicks has looked good. So if you can get that out of Tyone, the, the most inconsistent guy probably in your, rota- your current rotation, okay, all right, that's something to build around. So I, It's huge going into October if he can put together two, I don't know how many more starts he technically would have, but at least – two more starts that are somewhat like this because as long as Stroman is out, you know, I, and he's making I, progress, I, but, I, but he I was don't, bad before I don't know how injury. they're going to go with the rotation. I think the ass man and Wicks has, have pitched well enough to where they've earned a spot in that rotation. But I also know that they're very young and at least Tyone has some experience. And if he pitches well here in the month of September, maybe they ride with it. Here's, I personally would still go with the ass man and, Wicks in the in as like your four in the rotation, obviously Steele one, Hendricks two, but um, it'd be nice to have a little bit more like veteran there. And if he if he again he's gonna have to keep pitching well like this like he did today. I mean I'm asking for three earned less than five or six innings on a regular basis uh, these next couple starts to to earn that opportunity. But um, again we'll talk about that at the end of the month, but. When we talk about it, like, I mean, yeah. I, I hear what you're saying. By the way, Fernando in the Super Chat pointed out, last time Tyone was left in, he gave up a grand slam. That's fair. That's also, fair. also fair and also that was true. Against the, uh, that was against the Tigers. Which um, was like, hey. He had five no-hit innings in that's that That's right, game. and you could take him out, and yeah. he'd have a good feel about yeah. things. And it was then, the third time through the lineup, too, when he came out. Uh, so, I but to, what you're saying, I, okay. I just want to touch real quick on what you were saying about when if Stroman is able to come back and mm-hmm. if Stroman is able to be good, when he comes back for that one start at the end of the season. I mm-hmm. uh, see how the other guys pitch, you know. Maybe that allows you to use Wicks as your lefty reliever, another lefty reliever that you've That's been fair. looking for, right? Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know what the answer is going to be. Maybe Assad, who's been really good at taking a chunk of three innings, four innings, might be th- that might be the guy you do. Maybe Tyone starts and, and Assad becomes that guy as the backup plan if he doesn't have it. So... Listen, you want Strowman to come back if it's possible at all just to see what he has, and if he has something, then that just builds the depth in the different ways that David Ross could use it. Yeah. Um, related to Joe's super chat when he says, um, nobody asked why they brought Quas in instead of Leiter. I just, I'm going to go through the eighth inning again. So Guriel, Guriel's a righty. He got a hit. And then Moreno came up, and he and Quas walked him. He's also a righty. Right. Then he struck out Jordan Lawler, their you know top prospect mm-hmm. outside of Corbin Carroll. And then Ross brings in Leiter, 
who proceeded to strike out Perdomo, the nine hitter, and then a lefty. What, yeah, and then what happened? And that was to get two outs, <laughs> right? And then unfortunately, Corbin Carroll is the one who comes up, but who's also a lefty. So would who else would you want facing him uh, than lighter, lighter in that situation? He, you know, Corbin Carroll's a good baseball player. He hit that ball, and Say Suzuki came inches away from saving a run. And by 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 only going three batters for Merriweather, now you can use him tomorrow. It's another thing. Like you could yeah. bring Merriweather back again tomorrow if you if you had him go two innings. Now Merriweather, who's been arguably at for a little stretch here, <laughs> maybe your best reliever, yeah. he's out of the mix for tomorrow's game. I I don't know. I, yeah. I don't. I'd have been okay if Merriweather went two innings, I, to be honest with you. I'd been okay if he did it the way he did it. I, well, On paper, my, it, it lined up righty, 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 lefty, yeah. lefty, lefty, and lighter's been lights out against lefties. Right. Now, if you want to argue bringing in Quas in general, I mean, to me, Quas right. has been pretty good. Yes, he's been a little wild, um, but I don't think that he's been bad. I think he's been fine. We haven't seen him a lot in the high leverage, like seventh, eighth inning type situation. So if you want to argue that, like that's fair. But to argue that it should have been lighter instead of Quas, I think that's like I, I just I just don't agree with that. So uh, you could have left Tyone in again, for another. You could have left Tyone game. for another inning, then gone Merriweather into lighter. Okay, I I could see that's how that could have worked out. But again, you don't want to live. Tyone in there too long. Yeah. You don't want to leave. And again, at, at the end of the day, when we're, we're nitpicking at the decisions to bring these guys, like these guys in and then taking Tyone out because the offense didn't score any runs today. You know, they, they lost one to zero. If the offense scores runs. Yes. You're not, we're not sitting here nitpicking at who they're bringing in in certain situations. So again, to me, the game is on the offense for not hitting. You had three hits. One was Nico and Saya had the other two. Oh, and Saya I mean, almost made Bellinger that catch. was robbed of three hits today. I mean, they whatever. were they were uh, a half an inch away from making that catch mm-hmm. and getting away with it. He it was a, it was a great play. The fact, I mean, that's ugh, we're also so compl- you know uh, we're also talking about the pitching moves and the decisions there, but they were a half an inch away from. Getting out of it. Maybe the game's still being played. Hey, CH <laughs> Joe has a weekly pick X and NFL Survivor contest for everybody to participate in for real cheese, real cold hard cash. Here's how to enter. Head to splashsports.com slash CHGO. The link is in our description. Go ahead and sign up. Deposit cash to get started. It's just 10 bucks to enter either. CHGO's weekly NFL pick X contest and CHGO Survivor contest. The more who enter, the larger the prizes. We'll be running contests all year, so be sure to keep that link handy. Want to run your own contest? Maybe you're tired of being the commission leagues, chasing people down, and getting none of the reward. Well, now you can sign up to be a commissioner right through our link and earn money for the contest you're already running with friends and family. Head to splashsports.com slash chgo to join in. We'll have different contests coming out, so we are stoked to compete with and against you all. Be sure to check out the link in the description. And by the way, as you're heading out this weekend, maybe you're driving around, maybe you're going to a high school football game, maybe you're going to a college football game, maybe you're going to the Bears game this weekend, we are excited to partner with our friends at Circle K. Check out your local Circle K while you're on the road for the best coffee, beer, and snack selection, and premium gas. Look out for the freebies and giveaways down the road. I like to stop at the one at 83 in Arlington Heights Road in Buffalo Grove. Mm, pick me up some a little Red Bull if I'm driving far. Otherwise, stop in. Maybe I get a little Rally Rice crispy treat. I like the one on Broadway and Belmont. It's on my way to the gym in Lakeview East. Go in there, maybe get an energy drink sometimes, or maybe yeah. a maybe a like a protein bar after the gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Circle K for sponsoring CH Joe. Visit your nearest Circle K to pick up all your favorite finds. Great time to get out, enjoy the fall weather. I get a little <sighs> hint of fall. Yeah. Little hint of fall today. Big a lot of people going out shorts. and doing things. That's right. Biggie to yeah, wear big shorts. Big um, so, anyways, Cubs lose one nothing. They had three hits. Not a single runner for the Cubs reached second base. So nobody in scoring position the entire game. 
and they blow a really nice start from Jamison Tyone in which he went six innings, one hit, and nine strikeouts. So that's, I mean, I was that's the whole game about, summed up, period. I was thinking about one thing. Yeah. Is it almost a blessing? I mean, obviously not. We would have wanted them to win. But is there even beer in the fridge? Would we have been able to beer bat today? Yes, there's beer in the fridge. There's a beer in the fridge? Yeah. Because was, it was all loaded up for the it tailgate. It was all loaded up in the tailgate. I was driving in. I was like... They put some in the If it's a close game and we go to beer bat and there's no beer in the fridge, people are going to think that we're copping out about the whole, you know. So. Listen, yeah. we did every, Joey, we did everything we could to will this. First of all, we did. Cody took, everything. We, we amended the rules to who you got so we could take a picture for one game. Tyone and that was, was a success. To, to will Not him. to jump the gun on anything. That, I don't want to jump up. the gun, but just to know. You know what we the voodoo is still working. That's right. So right. That's if we, we have that one in Siskel the back and Ebert pocket would go when two we thumbs need thumbs up on that move. Two when, thumbs up from Siskel and Ebert when we need it. We yeah. have that move in the back pocket. Elmendo and Stuckmeyer. Two thumbs up on that move. Then the next thing we tried to do was get the offense going, and the rally. I belly couldn't find brownies. rally rice krispies <laughs> at West Loop Market today, so I said, "Wait a minute, there's a brownie." So when the Cubs started having some runners come, out, I said, "Let's do it, Cody." It was the Rally Belly Brownie. Yeah. Spell belly however you want. B-E-L-L-I, B-E-L-L-Y. Either way, it went into our bellies. We ate the brownie. We waited. We looked around. We thought, we don't feel any different. It doesn't look any different. We had the belly brownie. We don't feel fuzzy. There's no runs on the board. The belly brownie failed. It failed. That's, that's the bottom line. So the belly brownie, can I give it two thumbs up? It was a spect- to be honest, it was a spectacular brownie. It so I'm gonna, like you're so making I, it so sound I'm like go you got one the brownie thumb. at Sunnyside. We're going to go one up, one down. Well, that's where we thought the belly brownie was coming from, but it was, again, West Loop Market, some uh, Toronto bakery or something that they sell there. Again, the brownie taste, five stars. The belly results, <laughs> thumbs down in more ways than one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got a nice little taste of the, the rally belly brownie on... I can't believe it didn't work. So I can't either. You know, one thing that, you know, we like to, as men of integrity, me and Luke Stuckmeyer, we, we like to sit here and give credit to people in the chat. We like to sit here and give credit to ourselves yes. and other people when things are working. Right. But you know what? Sometimes things just don't work out, and you have to go back to the drawing board. And, uh, you know, like the Cubs, the Cubs needed their offense needs to do that. Then you go back to the drawing board, watch some tape, Maybe consider swinging when you're down two strikes. I'm look. I'm looking at you, Jamer Candelario. I'm looking at you, Ian Happ today. Um, I'm looking at you, Dansby Swanson today. Um, you know, like like them. You know, me and Luke will go back to the drawing board and we will figure out a way to manifest wins the rest of the year. Because that's all we've been doing all year. Come on, we had Barb. a bad day. Barb's bad giving day. me bum of the week. And Jailbreak is asking if the <laughs> Rally Belly Brownie was gluten-free. Do you think Luke Stuckmeyer eats anything gluten-free? Come on. Like, <laughs> we have gluten-free things in our house. They are not for me. <laughs> they, are, they are almost never for me. And let me say this. If you're talking about a brownie that's gluten-free, and it right. is not going to be as good as the one we had today. Oh, that it was so good, though. That Again, was probably the best part of the game taste, was eating that. thumbs up. Belly impact, thumbs down. Maybe it's we just got to stick to Rice Krispies. Maybe I just, you know, it, it, I if should. I, you know, I'm I'm going to Colorado and Phoenix next week. Like before I head out there, I'll just stop by the Jewel or something by my place and get a big giant box of them. Bring them in just for you guys. Now, are you going to load up on Patagonia gear before you go to Colorado? Because that's a big thing out there. You got to wear the no. Patagonia. No, I'm not to fit in. No. Otherwise, they're going to be look at the guy from Chicago. Good. Oh, okay. You're, that's that's why. Well, just know that you're going to stand out because everybody's going to be in Patagonia vests. Yeah, I know. Everybody. I'm not hip, hipster enough to be wearing that. Uh, Barb says, "Doesn't Stucky know the Rice Krispie treats bring them luck?" I do, Barb. But I went to the store and looked for them. They didn't have them. Now, it's my understanding. I read in the newspaper today, uh, <laughs> not the actual newspaper. I read it online that <laughs> because you know I'm hip. I, I did read. He knows how to work. I did read that the Mariano's brand is being sold. Uh, Kroger, who owns Mariano's, is being sold, and so that a lot of the Mariano's in the area are going to be going back to being called Jewel. Ooh. Really? How about that? Yes, because wow. the same company that owns Kroger, 
who owns bought Mariano's, is now buying Albertsons, who bought Jewel. So basically, it's all one. Everything is now owned by, will now be owned by Kroger. And they're going to rebrand some stuff. And so a lot of your Marianos will be turning into Jewel. Or as Ravi says, Jewels. Jewels. Jewels come back, baby. Dodge so jewels. I may stop at the uh, Jewels, future Jewels, mm-hmm. this weekend. And if I can find a bulk box of Rice Krispie Treats, that will be my donation to the Cubs playoff fund. Yeah. Hopefully they'll reimburse I, me, but I know, doubt it. I won't be here, but I will be. Oh, that's right. I will, gone, that's I will be at Coors Field Tuesday and probably Wednesday too doing whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. Whatever it takes to win. I, I know it's the Rockies, so they shouldn't need my help, honestly, because the Rockies are bad. But you know how it is <laughs> every time the Cubs go to Coors. Uh, that ballpark, it, if, if you're a pitcher, it. It sucks. Um, so yeah, I'm whatever I gotta do. What I, I, I I'm gonna I'll be at the DMVR bar probably on that Monday, that Monday night watching the game. But yeah, you should probably take Rally Rice Krispie treats to the DNVR bar just so probably pass them out. Can be a lot of people with the munchies <laughs> in that town. I wonder Barb why. says there's yeah. one on Ashland. Stuck. He could go there and sign autographs. No, Barb. Barb. <laughs> No, no, listen, right now, all we got to focus on is Justin Steele continuing his bid to be the National League Cy Young. And that's where the focus is now gone. And we have we have flushed this like a bad Friday night memory. It's yeah. just whoosh, gone. And I, and I think the odds for it, it to actually happen are higher now because Spencer Strider did not have a good start against St. Louis the other day. Now we need obviously I, I don't we gotta they need Blake Snell to you know have a bad start here or two but right you know I or do I, they well the thing is is like the Padres are bad so it's like you gonna give Cy Young to the guy who's on the bad team or you gonna give Cy Young to the guy who's on the good team and is, is literally like the ace of the staff so I, I don't know um but yeah no Steele's been great his last two starts eight <laughs> innings his last start uh, on Monday against the Giants. And a pretty easy win at beautiful historic Wrigley Field. And then the start before that, if you remember, he kind of struggled to start, but still didn't give up any runs and still managed to give you six. Uh, his, his last two starts have been so impressive. And they've been in big moments when they need him to, quote, unquote, be a stopper or to keep, keep the good vibes going. Uh, on Monday, it was for their second straight win. Right, and then the one before that, I believe they had lost the night before, and they needed they needed him to be good and to deliver, and they, and he did, and he's just been delivering all year. So, you know, if if Steele wasn't going tomorrow, I'd have a little bit more anxiety, I'd have a little bit more angst, but I feel good. I feel good about Justin Steele going tomorrow. And listen, Zach Gallon ain't pitching tomorrow, so whoever the Cubs see on offense, I mean. Who are whoever's so pitching for the Dodgers. They got a better chance be, tomorrow than they did yeah, today. Yeah, they got a better chance tomorrow. That and was the best game he's pitched all season. Yeah. I, I mean, that's not even debatable. It's only his second career shutout. Mm-hmm. So it, it was his best game of the season. Now, did the Cubs offense maybe get a little – do they have some role in that? Uh, yeah, I would say they have some mm-hmm. because there could have been some better bats, but it, it's not – you have to give him some credit too. Now, you just take this game, like I said, you take this game today – and you take the loss last night, you take both of them, and you throw them out just like the carpet on the poop plane, right? Mm-hmm. The infamous poop plane, you take that carpet, they threw it out right away, they replaced it. Tomorrow, we take out the poop plane carpet and we replace it with Justin Steele. The offense comes back, and it's like you're in a brand new plane. Right. Ryan I- could be flying in that plane right now to Kansas City, and he wouldn't even know it was the same plane. <laughs> That's how you could feel about the Cubs tomorrow. Yeah. I'm looking at the Diamondbacks pitching probables. They got Merrill Kelly going tomorrow. He's 11 and six with a 3.22 earn earn run average. You know he's a very, you know, solid, solid pitcher. But Justin Steele has been better than him this year. So he's uh you know the the Cubs need to get the offense going right. And then uh, Sunday, Brandon Fad it Fat Fad. I don't know how you say his name. It's P F A A D T. How would you say that? Fat. Fat? That's what I want to say. Is fat. fat. Brandon Fat. Uh, 
one and eight yeah, with I a mean, six point two seven earn run average. So maybe it's fought. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, don't I mean, I don't that. want the wind to be like howling out, but maybe like the wind blowing in, perhaps like don't blow in as much. Like, I just feel like the Cubs have hit so many line drive or fly balls right to the warning track these first two games. A lot. There was a lot of warning track that we thought were hit harder than they were today. Oh um, boy. I thought the, even magical. Uh, like I jo- thought the Joey old beef thought sandwich. magical hit one out. I thought that was Master Bony. <laughs> no, that was magical. <laughs> Oh, I thought that was Ma- it was Madrigal. At one point, we had who did Madrigal get a hold of that one? Yeah, mm. we had the M and M brothers. We had one on base and the other one at at the plate, and then he hit it hard all the way to the edge of the dirt. Ah, uh, ninety off the bat. Not quite what we were. Didn't looking make for. it. Uh, that looked like he looked like it was a pretty swing. Stone Steve Mason says Cubs will make their the playoffs. In my opinion, from a Dodger fan here in L.A. By the way. Glad to see Belly raking this year. Happy for my dude. Thank you, Stone Steve Mason. Yeah, he's been to Sunnyside. Uh, Cody, can you tell <laughs> us about Goose Island Beer Company? Because they are one of our favorites. Oh, yeah. If not the favorite. They're our favorite because there's going to be plenty of it at our tailgate. Correct. For the Bears-Packers game on Sunday. Vibes. Goose Island is the official beer of CHGO Chicago's beer since 1988, folks. And what, like I said, at the Bears-Packers game or tailgate on Sunday, you might see some Oktoberfest, some, uh, some different ones from the Beer Hug family. The Tropical one is my favorite. Uh, obviously, a lot of 312. And then even the Full Pocket Pills, every, an everyday beer that the, the brewers are drinking, not the baseball team, the, the actual brewers at Goose Island. Uh, right now, my favorite one these days it's uh we, i saw all of the full pocket pills that they brought in the uh, yesterday yeah a lot and i uh, i i i should i i wish i could have grabbed a case to take home there's but they literally one. have it packed away to go to the tailgate there's so. a secret box of no plans joey knows joey back, knows where the stuff is. a secret box of no plans which i have not seen in months i haven't told matt or big dave about it they love the no plans i saw a box back there i don't think it's on its way to the tailgate hmm is there any full pocket pills in there? Are there, there any be. Rice Krispies in there? <laughs> no, no Rice Krispies. That's for sure. Already checked. Anyway, are there any brownies? Maybe, in maybe there? I'll maybe I'll find me a case to take home. Uh, grab Ultra Fresh Brewery exclusive beers at Goose Island's original brew house on Clybourne Avenue in Lincoln Park, or from their tap room on Fulton Street in West Town, which is it's a great tap room by the way. Uh, Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's beer, Luke. Hey, it's almost here, everybody. It's almost here. The day we've all been waiting for. Everybody's been talking about it. Now get your ducks in a row because it's the grand reopening of Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Fox Lake. Flock in Saturday, September 9th. That's tomorrow. Look at your calendar. It's tomorrow, September 9th, and celebrate our Get Ducked event with free prizes and your chance to win $1,000. Plus, during Jeep Adventure Days, get employee pricing on all new 2023 Jeep Gladiator models. The grand reopening of Ray's CDJR in Fox Lake is only on September 9th, but the savings are all month long. Get your ducks in a row. Get your ducks in a row. Get ducked. Ray's Aye. CDJR is reopening in Fox Lake. <laughs> deal, deal, deal. Deals, baby. And by the way. Think of us to give you these deals. The one thing about our folks at Ray, the price you see online is the price you pay. Yeah. There's no funny business going on. You see it online, that's what you're paying. Or cheaper, but you're not paying more than that. Mm-hmm. That's the Ray promise. Integrity. That's what we're talking integrity. about, folks. We're talking about Not only do integrity. me and Luke have integrity on this podcast, but so do they. Listen, I listen. I know this wasn't going to be a, a super fun chat today because you know back to back losses. When it's is the chat ever fun after a loss? The, uh, the a, chat a, is a Friday, here's my thing now. Friday fun day was ruined. They yeah. had back to back losses, tough losses against the Reds. Was that last week? Yeah, and they re- they bounced back nicely with uh, a sweep after that. So they split the series. Uh, they they split ended the up series splitting, with the Reds but and, and then, then they bounced back the with the Giants, sweep. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I think. Like you were saying before we got live, there's adversity here. Let's see how they respond. But 
it's like it feels like this was this was just happening where they they had just lost those two really frustrating games to the Reds and they bounced back nicely. So I think that it will say a lot about what this team is made of. I agree, and I said it yesterday. That's why I felt good going into this game today, just because the team has responded to adversity more often than not. Losing two in a row doesn't mean the season is over. Obviously, you don't want to lose this series. Obviously, you don't want to get swept this series. So, yeah, tomorrow there will be pressure on Justin Steele to go out there and perform, and there will be pressure for this Cubs team's offense to get going. But when I think about pressure, it's like, well, look at where this team was two weeks before the trade deadline. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they don't do what they did then, this team would have been demolished probably, and we're sitting here probably like – not even caring what happened, you know what I mean. So, uh, I I'm I'm not giving up. I refuse to give up on this team. I refuse. I'm gonna ride this team tomorrow at 120 at beautiful historic Wrigley Field with Justin Steele on the mound, and whoever is not following me, do not come crawling back when this team gets into October. Joey's holding the receipts. <laughs> Calypso is too. Says half of the, half of their friends are are calling the season over. So done with it. LOL. <laughs> that is like that's dumb. Like we've seen this team has battled all season. Don't don't let shit hit the fan now. We're good. There's gonna be losses. Are we're they not the number two wild card right now? Of course. With and a so two game I'm just like you know you just said. Oh, I've got the receipts. What a good place. This feels great to be here rather than where we were game three of the season. They're. They're right in the mix. We're right where we want to be. It's all you can ask for. There's going to be close games. The offense is going to struggle occasionally, and let's adjust and get and get back to where uh, where we want to be. But but this is where we want to be. We're we're in the playoff race, so yeah. it's still like for a team that was projected to win 77 games, they're going to exceed every every pick that we made here in the preseason. For they're, real, they're probably going to exceed everybody's win total pick for the season, and. You know they're not perfect. This is who they are. Yeah. This is they this is the team, team they are. But a lot of they're better than a lot of teams in baseball right so, now. So Barb is asking: Is Cody going to the game? Nah, no. I don't think he is, is but critical. I think he's going to multiple next week. No. Yeah, I'm going to Coors Field for the first time in my life next week, and then I'm also going to to Chase Field in Arizona. Okay, Barb. So if you if next if week. the Cubs tank on the road, well, the key thing is actually. Cody? In the past, the Cubs have lost when Cody was at Wrigley. But well, possibly, I this, is an, that around. this is an absolute ultra turnaround where the Cubs will begin to win uncontrollably because of Cody's attendance at a visiting ballpark. You know, he, we know how much he also, vibes the, at the federal landmark, but the, can he vibe and bring the vibes to Coors Field? Can he pack the vibes? Mm. Can he pack the vibes into a bag? Will they charge extra for that? <laughs> Ding, Will he be on the not. diarrhea plane? <laughs> Di the Cubs it's have the, not lost when I have plane. attended Sorry. the second half. <laughs> I game. knew I misspoke. They as have soon won as it came every out. game I have attended in the second half of the season. That includes at the cell. No, I thought they literally just <laughs> lost the last one you were at. Becky wants Ross. No, I might be wrong. Way. Playoffs or not? I was at the Justin Steele start. The last game I was at was the Justin you're right, Steele you're start right. on Monday. You're right. They won that game. Listen, I was at the the final game against the Braves. I was right. at the game against at the Cell. I was at the Morrell walk off. You game. were at the Steel. Yeah, Steel shove mm -hmm. last weekend. Yeah, second half of the year, I'm I'm perfect at beautiful historic Wrigley Field. Again, mm -hmm. we we likely saved and turned around Jamison Tyone in the last 24 hours. Okay, now he gets a little bit of credit, but we get the majority of it. If we're one thing here at CHGO. We are humble. Credit to us for being humble. Yeah. Credit to us. Credit to us. We are humble. Fernando says, uh, Cody, no pants if you want them to win in Colorado. Yeah, but and now he's out. Now it's a little that's chillier state, in Colorado. It's a lot harder yeah. to get somebody to call and pick you up when you're out of state. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't I'd know if the Rockies the fans on. are going to understand yeah. the bit. I'd say keep uh, the pants Carter on. Hawkins says, go to the rooftop bar next to Coors. It's a beautiful view. Okay. I, I, I can believe that. I did that. tweet out the other day that I'm going – to Colorado next week and there were a few people who sent me some DMs and a few people who like replied and said that they were going so I'll uh, probably tweet something over the weekend or on Monday you know 
I'm trying like my friend who's there that I'm going with, he he's he's gonna let me know like where we're gonna be and then you know, maybe we'll do a CHGO Cubs like meet up somewhere in the ballpark or something like that or I don't know, maybe at, maybe go to a bar that's right there. Maybe meet up at the DMVR bar after the game or something, even though we're all Cubs fans. But I'm planning to go to the DMVR bar too. So Very nice. Uh, yeah, should be, should be a fun time in Colorado and then in Arizona the over the next weekend. I'll be there for the Friday and Saturday game. So I'm excited to get out of here. And uh, I've never been to Chase Field or Course, so I'm excited. Both really nice ballparks, although – I would say both ballparks sort of have that same new ballpark feel that a lot of the other ones have. Mm. Um, you, you know, is is Philadelphia different than Colorado, different than St. Louis, different than, like, all of those are very, very similar ballparks to me. Now, PNC stands out by itself uh, because the bridges. Uh, the Giants ballpark stands out by itself. Wrigley obviously stands out by itself. Is Coors Field nice? It's very nice. Yeah, it's real nice. I think you're going to like it. And uh, good food. Maybe you'll have breakfast over at Snooze there. That's a nice uh, breakfast place. Snooze AM Eatery. Snooze, downtown. Yep. You know, you always bring up Snooze. The multiple times we've talked about Snooze it's on this the show. the breakfast place in Denver, basically. Or snooze. They, they're big on Snooze there. All right. They're big on Snooze. Right. Um, well, I'll check it out. Well, you should, you should probably go up and see. You, you have time. Well, no, you don't because you're not leaving on time. I was going to say you could go see Coach Prime uh, host Nebraska in Boulder. Mm. Get, yeah. a, get, a, get an Uber and just go up to Boulder. Yeah. You still might want to do that anyways. I mean, I guess I could look at my flights or my look at the flights on Saturday. It's only like 40 minutes up to Boulder. Yeah. Host Good. Prime. Coach I am Prime. taking Colorado. Oh, I thought you were talking about host, yourself. Host, host Prime. Prime. Yeah, but that's only in the playoffs. I'm Host Prime. Got like it. Right now, I'm just prime time. We need to get you big, like, chain, gold chain, I was glasses. thinking about wearing a white fleece hoodie. Yeah. That would look good. In 100 degrees. That would look nice. To the Bears tailgate on Sunday. All right, who you got we had? And if you didn't hear earlier in the podcast, um, <laughs> yes. By the way, Nick, speaking an of amendment. which, Nick is asking if Cody can actually take the entire starting nine for who you got for the rest of the season after today. The entire <laughs> starting Ryan, nine. I don't even think Ryan would allow that. Ryan is so healthy. Ryan's the only one against it. Credit to me for coming up with the idea. Credit to Cody for putting it into action. Yeah. Credit to Brendan for allowing it to happen. Yeah. Ryan, three thumbs ups. Ryan, he he didn't answer today. He was nope. like, he's nope. like, no, no. Now I he took, I took Bellinger after you took Tyone, and then mm-hmm. Ryan was complaining about Bellinger, and he took Happ, and I said I'll I'll gladly trade. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to trade. Yeah, he didn't want to trade. Ryan complaining are you, about are who you, you taking got? the beer bat with you? Well, I, I mean, how are you going to do a beer bat chug there if you don't have the beer bat? Well, I don't think the people at Coors will let me bring it in. Yeah, but after the game, you, you can bring it back to your hotel room. Lodo, yeah. you're down in Lodo over there. You can, yeah, I guess you can so. beer I mean, bat it. I guess I, I could. You go over to home. the DNVR bar. You got to have the beer bat. You got to pack it in like careful a though with bat. the altitude. We'll it's, it, you know, you got to make sure you're hydrating. And leave it at my friend's place, and we'll we'll do them from his place. Just wouldn't. Be I right. think. I mean, I would put it in a bag. I wouldn't just throw it in the you know overhead compartment because might be poop up there. Could be a poop plane. You could be on the actual poop plane, and maybe they didn't clear that out. You don't think I can just put the bat in in my check bag? I think you could. No, I think I think that's I'm probably saying, the best way to do it. Okay, that's I what would I'm just sanitize do. it before you use it. Maybe yeah, maybe keep it away from. I'd the run plane. through a lot of hot water. Okay, okay, a lot of hot water. Yeah, you gotta be careful with the beer bats in the high altitude up there. That's Dangerous true. Yeah, things are gonna be a little bit different. I could make for a faster beer bat. Could make for a slower beer bat. Wow, that's something I hadn't thought about. What do you think about that, Cody? So, I'll be here. Ryan will be here. Corey's going to be here. Kevin might be here. So, we might go four wide while we're Because, you know, I mean, it takes three or four people to fill your shoes. Um, big, of, big of them to try. If the Cubs win, <laughs> will you call in live to do the beer bat chug remotely? I just don't think I'll have time to. Because, like, again, I'm not going to take – I'm not going to try and take it into the ballpark or – yeah, He's going I, on vacation. Like I, I don't know if I'll be able. He'll see. You'll see it on the twitters. Yeah. If anything, I can tweet it out, and then what if you guys can what bring if it even up? Better. What if, if you, you did it from a Rockies beer bat? I bet happen. you they sell them at Coors Field. If they, okay. If the Rockies have a beer bat, like if they sell beer bats, yes, I will get one. Yes, and I will do one yes. from Coors Field. And yes, 
Yeah, I'll send and it to you And you know what you do? You take some of our CHGO stickers and you just cover up the Rockies logos with CHGO stuff. Oh, and now all of a sudden, mm. it's the CHGO beer bat. Wow. You can put those in your pocket. Don't take up any space. <laughs> Barb says you're going to be too busy clubbing. Oh, how have I not brought that babes. in? I just realized I, I have like a real nice. Clubbing and picking up hot babes. Again, remember, you ever Barb see those beer? 83. You ever see those bat mugs? It's like a real yeah. bat. Yeah, yeah, I've got one of those a Cubs one. I should bring that in. It's not, it wouldn't well, really might be not a f- get through security. No, it's it's wooden though. Yeah, hmm. I have one of those at home. Yeah, it's nice, like a real. It's like a half a bat. Yeah, it's like the the. Barrel. It's a beer barrel. Yeah, it's a beer barrel. All right, so Cody won. Uh, who you got by taking Jameson Tyone? Credit to him, and the season is back on track tomorrow against Hopefully. Justin Steele. Don't forget. Plenty of time to sign up to be a CHGO diehard. Why do you want to do it right now? Because you could sign up and instantly get your 20% off, which you get all year long, on the tailgate this weekend. I'll be there. The kickoff tailgate, Wabash and Cermak. Me and Luke both The official will be there. CHGO tailgate, the best in the city. We will be there. By the way, you always get the premium written content with that membership at allchgo.com so you don't miss any of Ryan's articles. off all events like the tailgate. 20% off the dope merch, which just launched as well. We had some Cub stuff, big bear stuff coming out. We got the meatball shirts that are out right now. Check them out at allchgo.com. Meatball Island is out right now. Uh, Take the North. Take the North. Take the North. Take the North. And never give it back. Chicago versus everyone. Chicago Chicago versus versus everyone. Some great merch. Diehards can get the hoodie. when you sign up to be a diehard, you get a free shirt. So any of those shirts you can pick from. Yeah. Maybe you want, uh, hey, Chicago, what do you say? And, of course, there's the members-only Discord where you and Gary can talk about uh, slaughter and the way his season ended and all those wonderful things. And just complain a lot. Gary wasn't everyone here goes in there at events a lot, too. And you I could wear a velour rope. Sometimes we got to That's what Luke used to talk down. about. That's that. probably like, I, next that's season fine. now, but we are trying to get it for the playoffs, that if you are a member, we are trying to get the CHGO velour rope, but... Currently not included in the CHGO membership. Yeah, just an idea. Imagine a spark that we have. Imagine if all, if me, you, and Ryan just showed up on set one day in the robes, like blue Cubs, Cubs colored robes, and we had shorts on underneath, so it looked like we might only be in robes, but you couldn't quite tell. Like when (laughs) Cody wears shorts. Yeah, you know, everyone's just kind of like, is he wearing? Now that will be a vibe for maybe if they make the playoffs. (laughs) Come in for the playoff yeah. game like that. The velour robe, mm-hmm. nothing but. CHGO pipe, on the back. But we're not going to smoke it because of the sprinklers. Right. All right. Thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast. Uh, Cubs lose 2-1. to one. Zach Gallen, a complete game shutout against the Cubs. One might call that shoving. Justin Steele on the mound. Future Cy Young winner, Justin Steele on the mound. Manifest. Manifest it. Big weekend coming up. Hope to see you at the tailgate. Until the next time, fly the W.